Hey folks, it's Mangrel. Welcome back to the channel. And I want to try to refine the PIDs on this guy here. So you're looking at my QAVS Mini 3-inch Freestyle. I've had this quad for a little bit of time. It is my go-to 3-inch quad. And I've been tuning the PIDs more through experimentation using the Betaflight sliders. And I thought I had this flying really, really well to begin with but I wanted to try out the PID Toolbox tool, which is a tool that lets you more objectively tune your PIDs and it leverages the black box logs and a specific kind of way of setting the sliders to really pinpoint what those optimal PIDs are and hopefully give you a better flying quad with a lot less experimentation, but also a lot less time as well. Now in this video, I'm not gonna show you exactly how to use the software, how to install it or anything like that. There are really good videos already out there by the developer of the tool himself, so the guru of PID Toolbox. So he does a way better job than I can probably ever do on the tool itself. I'll link you to his video and I'll focus more on my experience with trying to tune this quad using the tool. So right now you're looking at the first flight and I want you to focus less on my flying abilities and more on the general performance of the quad. So things like prop wash, any kind of instabilities, any kind of shakiness in the HD footage, anything like that. And what you're looking at is the unmodified footage. So I haven't done any kind of stabilization or anything like that. This is straight off the goggle DVR. And my initial intent was to keep these flights a little bit more kind of anonymous and a surprise, but I just realized that in the top right corner of the OSD, you can actually see the PID profile I'm using, which kind of ruined that surprise. All right, so let's take a look at what we're seeing here. And originally I wasn't gonna put any commentary here, but I think I need to really speak to what we're seeing here. And, and this is my first time seeing the actual video on the computer and the large screen. And what I'm noticing is we're getting very, very smooth flight here. And you can see when I'm going around these trees very quickly, I'm not seeing any kind of jitters in the quad. The quad seems to be handling those turns very smoothly. And I haven't really seen too much prop wash. And so you see that turn, I didn't see any kind of wobbles or any kind of jitter. Again, this turn here, it handled it very, very well. And we're doing a split S again, quite smooth. I personally did not see any kind of weird behavior. Split S again, no weird behavior. So this seems to be flying very, very oh, we saw a little tiny bit of wobble. It could have been a little bit of a wind gust perhaps, but very minimal. Another split S, again, no prop wash, and it seems to be handling it very, very smoothly. Now, bear in mind, this is a little bit of a windier day, a little bit chilly as well, so it's possible I've got some shivers in my fingers too, but I'm not seeing really anything that has me concerned based on this flight footage here, and it did feel pretty good in the flight, especially these really quick turns. We're not seeing any weird behavior. So it's handling you know, quite well. And you know, when I was flying this, it, it felt really good in flight, but sometimes you don't see exactly how the footage looks like through the goggles. You need that bigger screen to gauge how things are looking. But that split S, I didn't see any wobbles, any weird behavior. So this is looking pretty good. And I suspect the rest of the footage here, we'll see more of the same, but this is looking pretty, pretty good. So let me see, anything else that would have us concerned? I saw a little tiny bit of prop wash in that fast turn, but I did get pretty close to the ground. So possible we, we found some maybe ground effect in that. That's just my poor uh, piloting skills. So a little bit of a slow maneuver there. Everything seems to be pretty smooth. Turn here, looking very, very good. And at this point, colder day, battery voltage getting low, we're heading back. Now for the second flight, let's take the same kind of look here and see what it's doing. So far, it seems okay. I don't see any weird behavior. I saw a little tiny bit of a shake. That was a pretty slow turn and it was a little bit shaky for its speed. Split S seemed fine. Okay, we need to do some fast maneuvers here to really gauge. Split S, that seemed okay. 
Yeah, I'm not seeing any weird behavior. Yeah, th those fast turns, I'm seeing a little bit more jitterness and a little tiny, but nothing too crazy. But this PID, this is the experimental PID, it seems to have a little bit more jitter in it, but very minor. Okay, so I just saw in this forward flight, yeah, so you see the little shaking. So definitely something going on with this PID, especially on lower speed climb maneuvers. This turn here, it was a bit shaky, but could have been my cold fingers. Yeah, let's keep watching. Anything else happening here? Yeah, a little bit shaky. Mm, this looks fine. Okay, that that was fine. I did I didn't see any prop wash or any weird behavior. Yeah, that one seemed okay as well. How about this one here? This one was fine. It was a little bit slow speed. Okay. A little bit of a look back. Seemed fine. A tiny bit of a shake at the end, but nothing too crazy. Okay. That turn seemed okay. I didn't see any weirdness. Okay. That one seemed, ooh, very close, but that one seemed okay as well. So, so far, what I'm seeing here is it's, yeah, okay. So, as we're heading straight, did you see that little bit of a shake? So, it definitely seems like this pit is not as stable in more straightaways or in more kind of low speed. But comparing the two pits, definitely seeing better effect than the first one. Let's take a look at the actual pit tune. And on the screen right now, I've got the pit tune that I ended up with based off of the pit toolbox tool. You can see these sliders are all over the place, but the main thing is I've got the I set to 0.5. So right now we can see that my P's are in, you know, low to mid 70s, I's are around 60s, feet forward is around 90s. Let me flip over to my experimental tune. Again, this is the tune I came up with through regular experimentation without using any tool. Funny enough, my P's are exactly the same as the tool PIDs. My eyes here are way, way, way higher, and my feet forward is a little bit higher. So I think the eye and the feet forward is what seems to be contributing to the different uh, flight characteristics. Now, when you're doing your actual tests with a tool, you want to have lower rates. And what is mentioned in the video by, by our guru is that you want to have around 200 degrees per second, but a flat curve. However, I didn't see any video of his that actually clarifies how this should look like. So through experimentation, I ended up with something like this. And this gives you a fairly linear curve and you can use this to safely do your test indoors. I think everyone will agree that subjectively looking at the video, the PID toolbox tune seems to fly better and more smoothly, less prop wash. But the whole point of this tool is to look at this objectively. So I went ahead and I pulled two logs, one log with my experimental tune and another log with the PID toolbox tune. So before we get into the step analysis, analysis, <laughs> this is the step um, analysis tool, let's go ahead and look at the actual plot itself because I wanna see how closely we're following. So right now this is the PID toolbox tune. So if I zoom in here, let's get as close as we can. So right now we're looking at set point and gyro, and it seems like, you know, we're following pretty closely, a little bit of maybe smoothing issues with these uh, jitters here, but ultimately this doesn't look too bad. A little bit of kind of overshoot here, but you know what, this is, this is fine. I spent probably what, an hour to an hour and a half doing this tune, so it, it's as good as I think I need it to be. Let's go ahead and run the step response and see how this tells us uh, what kind of story this paints and what's going on. So let's select our two files. All right, I don't care about why, so let's run this. Okay, so this is kind of showing us more objectively what's happening because the intent here is for us to try to get our peaks as close to one as possible and then of course minimize our latency. So if I look at my, which one do I wanna look at? I wanna look at 
this guy here. So number one is the PID Toolbox tune. Number two is my experimental tune. And by experimental tune, I mean it's a tune I came up with by just playing around and seeing flight performance through the goggles. So let's take a look, look at these two first. Roll response, I see my experimental tune, you know, overshoot, undershoot, and then kind of back and check. Whereas if I look at the one here for the pit toolbox, yeah, a little bit overshoot, a little bit undershoot, and then kind of back and check. We're very close to one. Um, actually, let's run this with a y, y correction and see how that looks. Okay, so maybe, maybe this gives us a better image here. But ultimately, similar kind of view. We're very close to one with our pit toolbox tune, quite a ways out with the tune that was experimental. Latency-wise, we're the same. So this kind of shows us objectively that we should be flying better with the pit toolbox tune. Now, if we check out the pitch, similar kind of story. We're very close to one, a little bit further out. Interestingly enough, our latency is a little bit slower with our pit toolbox tune, but you can see the line here shows that we are handling a bit better. So I think this shows us that this tool really helps us with tuning, but more importantly, it lets you do the tuning in a very quick manner. It took me probably an hour to an hour and a half to do this tune. So hopefully you found this video useful. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment, and stay tuned for more videos.